Uh, hi everyone, Mr. Chairman, thanks for this uh, nice introduction. My name is Niet Huyman Drogendek and I will talk about a biomedic accelerometer inspired by the cricket's clay with hair. So, the cricket. The cricket has many hairs and well, some of those hairs are used for flow sensing, some for tactile sensing, and there are also hairs which are used for uh, well, inertial sensing. You can see a uh, picture of a uh, cricket over here and if you look more close to the cricket, you'll find here a uh, so-called churches and if you look more close even then you see all those tiny hairs. And those hairs over here are a bit club shaped. And it turns out that the cricket uses these hairs to detect the orientation of itself and also equilibrium. And it does that based on gravitational acceleration. And well that means that this device actually an kind of accelerometer with a range of plus minus one G. And well, from this we said, well, maybe we can also make an accelerometer, well, uh, inspired by this cricket's clavet hair. And well, in the past, our group worked a lot on flow sensors, hair flow sensors, also inspired by the cricket. So we said, well, maybe we can use that process and make an accelerometer of it with a range of plus minus one G. And we also got some design rules for that. So we, we said, well, okay, the, the cricket's hair is a bit club shaped, it looks a bit around or thick, so we want to have a big hair. And it's also because, which we will see in the theory and modeling part, that a thick hair minimizes the response to flow. And also it gives you a large acceleration induced response. Our first aim is to measure harmonic accelerations uh, in the frequency range of 100,000 Hz and to aim for a one degree of freedom. So now we'll move on to the theory and modeling part. Of this talk. After that, I will say something about the fabrication of the sensor, show some results, and I will end up with conclusions. So here you see again a model of the hair, and well, if you assume an acceleration which is perpendicular to the hair, you can compute, calculate the torque which is generated on that hair due to the acceleration. And if you consider the hair to be straight, because that is for anal analysis purposes you will find that the torque is actually proportional to the diameter squared and the length of the hair squared. So we already see that the diameter and the length of hair geometry overall is important. And moreover, if you consider the hair to be a second order mechanical system, you can say well that hair rotational angle is well depending on some system properties like the spring constant, uh, some damping and the moment of the inertia of the hair itself for which the moment of inertia is given by this equation where you can see again the length of the hair and the thickness of the hair and well in case we say well we consider the hair to be long which means that the length is larger than the diameter <coughs> we will find also the moment of inertia has this dependence so there is a clear impact of the hair parameters B and L on the system's response but we already mentioned well hairs are also used for flow sensing and that's not what we want to do over here but then we can also do a similar procedure and then we find that the torque which when you apply flow on the hair is proportional to also the length squared but the diameter has a very different role because it only scales with to the power of a third so apparently the diameter holds the key over here and that's why we want to design thick hairs now, about the fabrication, what we do is we start with an SOI wafer and we pattern the device layer that's visualized over here. Then we deposit a thin layer of stoichiometric silicon nitride and on top of that we deposit polysilicon and again a pattern. Then we move on to deposit a layer of silicon rich nitride, which is about one micron thick. And what you see over here is a membrane with some, uh, some holes. And on this membrane, we will put in the end the hair. And you also see some, well, some torsional beam structures over here. The idea is in the end that the hair will rotate, then also the membrane will rotate. And because we have silicon below, and we put on aluminum on top. We have a parallel plate configuration over here so we can capacitively uh, or use a capacitive readout for measuring the hair rotational angle. 
Then we realize our hair also using Azure 8. The eventual hair length will be out about 800 micrometers. Um, but the device can move now to realize that we do xenon diphoride etching to release uh, our structure by removing the polysilicon below. And that's also why the holes are there to get the xenon diphoride to reach the polysilicon below. And this is a schematic view, and this is how it looks in real. You can see by a sim picture over here, the really long and thick hair, uh, the membrane, uh, some, 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 some pads for supplying the signals, and um, some xenon diphoride uh, etching holes. And now the question is always, does it work? Uh, well, it does. And to prove it, we use this setup. What you see over here is a, a shaker. We put our accelerometer on it. Uh, use AC voltage to drive the shaker with an amplifier. And to measure our hair rotational angle, or one is a measure for it, we use a uh, capacitive conservation in such a way that we supply one megahertz signals. Um, then we use a charge amplifier to measure the change in capacitance from demodulation, low pass filtering, or band pass filtering. And we got some oscilloscope and also a dedicated multimeter what the signal uh, is. So first we look at the frequency response. Therefore we added also a reference accelerometer to our eye system and we looked at frequency between 50 and 1000 Hertz. And we did that not only for accelerations, but we also looked at the flow response because we said, well, we want to aim for a uh, accelerometer, but you do not want to make a flow sensor, but still it is a hair and also a hair flow sensor. So we interested, okay, what's the flow response? And the results for those measurements are shown over here. Um, horizontally, the frequency and vertically the mechanical transfer, which is the output voltage in RMS per meter per second square. And well, the idea about flow is that you have uh, flow velocity, and if you are in the frequency domain, which you are over here, then we can multiply uh, or we can use the frequency properties to convert it to an acceleration. Um, and what we see over here in red is the acceleration response, blue is the flow response, uh, lines are model, points are measurements, and we see that there is a nice agreement between model and measurement for both flow and acceleration, and furthermore, the acceleration response uh, clearly dominates, and that is what we want, so that is a good thing. And also, if you look at the phase response, we see clearly a 180 degree phase shift at about 300 hertz, and that is uh, also observed over here. We can also look at the sensor directivity because we said, well, we want to have one degree of freedom uh, for our accelerometer. So the question is, do we really have achieved that? So what we did was we fixed the amplitude and the frequency of the acceleration and we rotated the sensor, well, clockwise over 360 degrees and we looked at the RMS output value and ideally you would get uh, you want to achieve a so-called figure of 8 and luckily we also uh, observed it see over here and uh, you were rotated over well, 360 degrees and you measure the output if you plot it like that theoretical the 8 and also the dots uh, well show an uh, 8 so that's a uh, that's a good thing also, you can look at sensors uh, threshold, linearity, and noise level. And for that, we fix the frequency, but we vary the amplitude. Uh, so we can get an idea about the dynamic range, uh, what we can achieve. And one remark about this amplitude, uh, we wanted to go higher than 6 meters per second square, but that was not possible due to the used shaker clipping. And uh, what we did uh, was to define our threshold. We looked at the signal to noise ratio uh, of our uh, sensor. And when uh, the signal equals the noise, we say, well, that's our threshold. And you can see that over here. And again, points measurement, the line is the model. And well, if you take the asymptotes and you look at the intersection, you will find your threshold. And the threshold of our sensor at 80 hertz is 0.1 meter per second square. If you go a bit further about the noise, you can also uh, apply the LN deviation uh, method or analysis. And, uh, well, since this is an accelerometer, you can look at the velocity random walk and also the bias instability. And, well, the LN deviation is expressed in meter per second square, and these uh, are the results. Red are the measurements, blue is the bias instability, and in green the velocity 
random walk and you see that well you can average for about one minute and after that well you, you will not gain uh, anything anymore. Here are some numbers of the biometric accelerometer. Um, well it's an NMM system as we already saw. Resonance is about 320 hertz. Um, dynamic range, well it is at least 35.6 dB due to the limitations of the shaker. A threshold of 0.1 uh, meter per second square. Error on the full scale of about 3%. Velocity random wall, bias the thermal noise limit. The thermal noise limit is determined by the Brownian motion and well, we are not there yet. As you can see there's really a factor in uh, between. Mostly due to the used electronics and also environmental conditions due to uh, yeah, building vibrations, etc. To conclude, we made an accelerometer inspired by the cricket's clavet hair using service micro machining and SUA photography. Under the system, the performance of the sensor clearly depends on the hydrogen jump tree and there is a good directivity observed. Here again some numbers on the performance which we already saw in the table before. Also thanks to some people, some of these are also attending the conference, and also thanks to organizations like STW, NWO, Mesa Plus and University of Twente for their financial and other support, and also uh, thanks to you. So uh, if you have questions, I'm going to take them.